kaboom times two. Two super eruptions made the iconic Yellowstone caldera what it is today, not one. Researchers analyzed samples of shell sediment and volcanic ash from the Santa Barbara Basin. From these, they were able to determine that the Yellowstone caldera was formed by two volcanic eruptions 170 years apart. Each eruption was so powerful that it lowered the temperature of the planet and altered the climate. These two volcanic winters reportedly took place just as Earth was recovering from an ice age hundreds of thousands of years ago. That's pretty cool, right? It's gonna blow! How did volcano hellfire do this to our planet? 700 million years ago, planet Earth went from this to this. Nobody knows exactly why, but new research from Harvard may hold the answer. Scientists suggest that sulfate aerosols, resulting from years of continual volcanic activity, may have led to the Earth becoming relatively frozen, or what's known as a snowball Earth. The research postulates that 10 years of eruptions from volcanoes spanning 2,000 miles across an equatorial landmass could have plied the stratosphere with just the right amount of sulfur dioxide to radically alter Earth's climate. Sulfur dioxide is very effective at reflecting solar radiation when it gets to the higher levels of the atmosphere. Once there, it can remain for up to a year. This, plus the location of the volcanoes along the equator, may have created an atmospheric barrier against the sun. The cooler climate would have then created more ice, which in turn would reflect more sunlight. The research theorizes this process continued until the ice reached present-day California's latitude. There, the freezing Earth would have become irreversible, and ice would have eventually covered all of Earth. Or in other words, the ice both literally and figuratively snowballed the planet. If Yellowstone blows, it's goodnight Vienna. A volcanic eruption at Yellowstone National Park would be an American natural disaster on a scale that the country has never seen. The event would potentially see millions of casualties and wipe out the West Coast, with its ashfall stretching far beyond U.S. borders. This would cause a volcanic winter, during which widespread starvation would be a threat. According to UN estimates, global food reserves could last only 74 days. Fortunately, the actual chances of that happening are 1 in 730,000, and America's top brains are on the case to stop it from even happening. To preempt such a catastrophe, NASA has developed a plan to drill underneath Yellowstone and pump its magma chamber full of water, extracting the heat. Cooling the magma rock would occur at a rate of one meter per year, meaning it could take thousands of years to eliminate the risk of eruption. The cost of NASA's plan is estimated to be 3.5 billion US dollars. However, the space agency expects the clean energy derived from heat extraction would offset this via lower power costs and the creation of geothermal plants. This plan only covers Yellowstone. It doesn't include the other half dozen supervolcanoes in the USA or the 20 others elsewhere on the planet. But experts say they rarely blow and Yellowstone only erupts every 600,000 years. And when was the last time it blew? Around 600,000 years ago, give or take a few millennia. Alaskan volcano eruption could mean trouble for planes in the air. The Alaska Volcano Observatory sent out a warning to all aircraft following an eruption at the Bogoslav Volcano, the latest in a series of eruptions that first began in December 2016. Airlines were placed on high alert on Saturday after Alaska's Bogoslav Volcano erupted at 10.15 a.m., spewing a cloud of ash more than 30,000 feet into the air over the Aleutian Islands. Once ash enters an aircraft engine, glass in the ash melts as it passes through the plane's combustion chamber, which operates at temperatures as high as 1,500 degrees Celsius. The molten glass particles then stick to the turbine blades and bring them to a standstill. This can cause the engines to stall. The particles in the ash can also block the pitot tubes, which act as airspeed sensors. The blockage would give the aircraft false airspeed readings, which could be overlooked by the pilots. A red alert was downgraded to orange on Sunday after no further ash emissions occurred.